Hi guys, welcome back to Nebula Fox Toy Reviews. Today we are going to be taking a look at these three new Imaginext sets from the Jurassic World Dominion line. And because it is a Dominion review, we will also be taking a look at another one of these to see if we can get something new. So the egg is going to go off to the side for now. And uh, so yeah, here are the three sets. We have the Pyroraptor, the Atrociraptor, and the Dimetrodon. I actually want to take a look at the Dimetrodon first. So if I just put the two raptors down there. And then here we have the Dimetrodon in the packaging. Very, very simple <laughs> packaging. Not a right lot here. This is sort of wasted space here, really. But we have an adorable picture of Rexy here. We have the Dominion logo, the Imagine X logo. The forests with the car's headlights and stuff there. On this side, Dimetrodon and the logo. On this side, just the Imaginex stuff. On the back, lots and lots of words that kids are going to love reading. And then we have some images of what the figure can do. More logos, more words and all that jazz, even more words underneath. So let's go ahead and break the figure out of the packaging and I also need to get the capture gear out which doesn't seem to there we go Is the packaging down here move the scissors away so here we have the Dimetrodon and that is the capture gear so the Dimetron is a nice little figure. It is cool. It's all moulded in green, either this dark green or the light green underneath. The orange on the frill, I well spine, I believe is paint. So yeah, I think the orange has been painted on. As with all of the Imagine X figures, they have really nice follow me eyes. This one done in like a lighter green but yeah i love the following eyes on these so yeah it's so it's got some quite nice detail into it for a little kid's toy i mean the the button here kind of ruins it but oh well it is a little kid's toy like i said so yeah some very nice like it's a very nice detailing it's all like soft Detailing, so you know you're not going to get as much detail in these as you do in the like the main line, but they're still very nice figures of the dinosaurs represented in the film. So the mouth can open. There's no paint on the inside of the mouth, but there is a little bit of detailing on the roof of the mouth. There's no tongue, unfortunately, but oh well. So yeah, for articulation, as you've just seen, the mouth can open and close. And all of the legs can move a little bit. There isn't right much point to the moving legs though, just because for it to stand flat, like because of the position of the legs, either it needs to be in this this pose so it can stand normally. But obviously the, the teeth are painted nicely as well. Here is the capture gear, which is just moulded... You know, there's no paint on it, it's just one solid piece of shiny grey plastic. So there's not really a lot to say about that. But for the action feature, what you do is you press the spine down. <coughs> so it locks into place. Excuse me. And then you can put the capture gear on. Like so doesn't really click on properly don't know if it's meant to i don't think it's meant to but it sort of just pops on top like that i mean it's not really gonna stop it from biting anyone really but yeah so when you press the button the spine flies up <laughs> and it breaks loose from its capture gear i've no idea what made them think this was you know something a demetrodon could actually do but oh well. It's a fun little gimmick for a little kid's toy. I 
seriously don't get it because obviously Dimetrodon couldn't do that with its spine in real life. But, eh, it's a bit of fun for kids. So, I'll put the Dimetrodon off to the side and I shall get the next one. Who's next? The Atrociraptor is next. So, exactly the same packaging. And the opposite picture there is different. But exactly the same packaging. And this is specifically a Atrociraptor Tiger. Why doesn't it have tiger stripes then? Because that's the whole idea behind tiger, is it has stripes. So wait a minute. Let's break them. Break everything out. There we go. Throw that down there. Ah, can get rid of this little bit of cardboard around that. There we go. And here is a trusser out to tiger. Now this one doesn't actually have any action features or anything. It's purely um, just a standalone figure because the, the, the action feature is with the capture gear. So here is our Atrociraptor Tiger. His eyes are done in yellow. Or her. And the Atrociraptor's male. I don't know. Since we now officially have male dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise. From people creating them. We... I don't know if the Atrociraptors are male or female. So yeah. So we've got the nice following eyes. And this figure is just done in two colours. We've got the orange and the cream underneath. And that is it. The teeth are not painted any differently, but they are moulded really nicely. We've got the nice soft detailing going down the back with like, the soft uh, stripy scales. And here we've got the, got the nice cute little claws on the hands. And then the big old stompers on the feet but for some reason despite it being a raptor an atrociraptor it does not have the sickle claw which is a bit odd uh for articulation the mouth doesn't open unfortunately so it's just stuck like that but you can move the arms and the legs it does look like the tail should have something because there's a break there but it doesn't now for the capture gear, I, I don't think it's more, I don't think it's really the capture gear. I think for this one, it's more restraint gear. So what you do is you put your dinosaur in the restraint gear and it, it can easily, it can easily get out. But the idea is, if you think about this like the, uh, the Velociraptor, so the, the Raptor Squad in the first Jurassic World film. They've got them in the restraint gear, they've given them the Indominus scent, and then once they give the signal, they release the raptors. I'm using that as an example because I'm not really wanting to spoil Dominion as of yet. Uh, I have seen the film, it is an awesome film, but I don't really want to talk about the film directly in any of my reviews until it's you know, been out at least a week, maybe two weeks. Because I think... I went to see the film, as of recording this, I went to see the film a week ago. So, yeah. So as of recording this, I saw the film a week ago, but as of uploading this, um, it's probably been out a good few weeks. So, yeah. Screw it. <laughs> the Atrociraptors are kept in little pens that look, in little crates that look nothing like this they have nothing to do with this um the truck that's carrying them crashes and then they open the crates and then the atrociraptors get out they're given the command because they work like the indoor raptor in fallen kingdom where they have the laser sighting like the laser target thing and then the the noise um activates the attack so I don't know why this Atrociraptor has actually come with this sort of restraint gear because it's nothing to do with how they're restrained in the film. 
But oh well. So yeah, anyway, you press the button on the back, the arm lifts up, and the dinosaur is free to try and kill uh, Owen. But that is that. That is all you can really say about the Atrociraptor. So next, the Pyroraptor. Exactly the same packaging, except it says Pyroraptor there, and it has the Pyroraptor there. So let's get the figures out. This is the one I was most um, most looking forward to out of all of them, which is why I have saved him for her for last. And I can't get the capture gear out because of the stupid sellotape. Hold on. So for some reason they think people will specifically want to steal the capture gear so they tape it down. And put the capture gear up to the side, move the scissors. Here is the Pyroraptor. Seriously, one of the dinosaurs I was most looking forward to seeing in the film. Disappointed by how short its screen time was. Same with the Dimetrodon. There were so many new species shown in Dominion. And not one of them really got the screen time it deserved, apart from the Therizinosaurus. But none of them really got the screen time they deserved. The Pyroraptor you saw for maybe like a couple of minutes. And it's literally the scene that you see in the trailer where the dinosaur is in the snow, like the snowy area, and then goes swimming. That's all you see of it in the film. It's 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 so disappointing. Well, luckily the Dimetrodon scene wasn't really spoilt in the trailer, so that's good at least. But the Pyroraptor scene, you pretty much see the entire scene in the trailer. It's it was disappointing. I mean, I love the film. I just wish each new, I just wish that each new species that was shown was given more screen time. But yeah, anyway, here is the Pyroraptor, the first truly feathered. Uh, dinosaur in the Jurassic World franchise. The Therizinosaurus, yes, it has feathers, but it doesn't have feathers to the same extent as the uh, Pyroraptor. But it does have feathers. So this is like true feathers, almost flight feathers. Not really shown in the figure, but it is fully feathered and awesome in the film. So anyway, coming up, we have the eyes done in yellow again. Once again, they are the follow me eyes. Also, once again, nothing, no detail in the mouth. There's a little bit of... No, there isn't even any detail in the roof of the mouth. The teeth are painted nicely. And the rest of it is just moulded plastic. So you've got the head, neck and the main body in this light, like this lighter orange. And then you've got the little feathers on the back of the head, arms, legs and the tail in a dark orange. I do really like this figure. The The feathering detail on it is really nice. They've sort of given it semi-human-like hands, but oh well. And this raptor actually has the sickle claw. Raised ever so slightly, but it does have it. And uh, yeah, some nice feathering going on on the tip of the tail. The feathers themselves, like the main feathers, so back of the head, tip of the tail and the arms, the main feathers do actually have some quite nice detailing on them. Uh, they have the weird little like veiny details. But then most of the, and then it's all like softened detail for the leg, for the um, body and top of the leg feathers. For articulation, as you've seen, the mouth opens and closes. The You can move the arms as well. Uh, you can also move the legs. And for this one, you can also move the tail. So this one has the most articulation out of all of them. Uh, all of these cost the same. They were all the same price, by the way, I think, which was £10, I believe. But yeah, this is definitely the better, best of the dinosaur figures, at least. Uh, Demetrodon's not a dinosaur. I'm just saying dinosaur in it as a, as a general term at the moment. But yeah, the Pyroraptor is definitely the best of the... Animal figures. Oh my god, excuse me. Yeah, I'll say that then. 
Power Raptor is the best of the animal figures. Now its capture gear opens up like this. And how it goes, I believe you put it You put it like this, I think. Oh, there we go. So you put it like this, and then this goes around as a muzzle. See, this capture gear makes sense. Because it's sort of holding the arms in place. So the, di the dinosaur can do that, but it can't raise its hand to then go whap. So this capture gear makes sense. It's acting as a muzzle, so it can't bite anyone. And it's also restraining the arms so it can't slash anyone. It's not restraining the feet, but it's working the best. It's working better than the uh, Dimetrodon one. So for this guy's action feature is you've got the button. And he breaks out, or she, should I say. Uh, she breaks out of her capture gear, like so. So she just breaks the muzzle. There we go. She just breaks the muzzle away and then she can run off and bite things. Um, it doesn't do anything about the arms, but that doesn't really matter. It clips on really nicely. And to get a better look at it, it is once again just all done in the solid, um, like the silver plastic. These are the bits that go on the arms and then you've got the arm that comes around, the arms that come around and act as a muzzle. Which have, yeah, you know, that little bit of articulation. And yeah, so when you put it on, you need to make sure that the dinosaur's head feathers, uh, there is a little bit of a ridge there. So the dinosaur's head feathers need to go above the ridge, like so. So it sits on secure. And even when the that is open, it still does not want to come off easily. Because there's like little teeny tiny ridges, I think. Yeah, if you look, there's like little teeny tiny ridges in the feathering. And that's what this just clips onto. So yeah. That's actually really cool. I am definitely happy with the Pyroraptor one. So let's bring all of these back in. There we go. That's just so there's something in the background while we take a look at this. So let's have a look see. And let's hope we get a new figure. Let's hope we get a new one from the captive's eggs. Come on, let's hope we get a new one. I'm not bothered if it's like a repainted figure from a different series, but as long as it's a new one to this series, I'm okay. No. Alright, let's go. So we have that. Ooh. Oh, is it the power? Oh. We've got the Parasaurolophus again. I already have the Parasaurolophus, so this is my second one. But it doesn't matter, because the Para is a good one to um, herd build, really. So yeah, not going to take a close look at that, because I already have it. So, there you go. Let me just move all the rubbish out the way. So, yeah. That was that. That's all I can really say about them. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. And I shall see you all in the next video, whatever that'll be. Bye!